Hey, welcome. This is the Cohasset School Facilities Committee meeting for January 10th, 2023. Um, and first order of business is roll call. Kathleen Burns, Paul Kearney is muted. <laughs> Present. <laughs> Jennifer Lesky. Present. Greg McClellan. Present. Martin Nee. Nan Roth. Present. Paul Schubert. And Douglas Schultz. Present. Okay. So the uh, reason for this meeting is we did receive a letter from the MSBA uh, basically telling what our fate is. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen of their letter and read it so it's in the minutes. Uh, we received this, Mr. Jack Creighton, our chair for the select board did receive this on December 21st. So it's made its way through to us. Dear Mr. Creighton, the Massachusetts School Building Authority, the MSBA, would like to thank the town of Cohasset for expressing an interest in the MSBA's grant program for school building construction, renovation, and repair projects through the 2022 Statement of Interest, the SOI process. Overall, the MSBA received 54 SOIs from 46 different school districts for consideration in 2022. In reviewing the SOI, the MSBA <clears throat> identifies the school facilities that have the greatest and most urgent need based on an assessment of the entire cohort of SOIs that are received for consideration each year. Based upon the MSBA's review and due diligence process, it has determined that the Coasset High School SOI will not be invited to the MSBA's eligibility eligibility period this year. If the district would like the school to be considered for future con collaboration with the MSBA, the district should file an SOI in the upcoming year. The MSBA will, will begin accepting SOIs for consideration in 2023 on Friday, January 13th, 2023. Please, Please see the information below regarding the upcoming 2023 SOI process, which is also stated on the MSBA's website. If the district is planning on submitting an SOI in 2023, consider notifying local government boards of your intentions as local governing bodies will have to vote to approve submission of an SOI with votes uploaded to the SOI system, which was a new requirement in 2022 and will remain a requirement for filing an SOI in 2023. SOI closing date for districts submitting under core program, which is primarily for projects considered as extensive repairs, renovations, additions slash renovations and new school construction will be Friday, April 14th, 2023. The MSBA remains committed to collaborating and partnering with the town of Casa to better understand school facilities issues. The MSBA will be sending detailed information regarding the 2023 SOI process in the coming weeks. Please feel free to contact Katie, capital project manager, the number should we have any questions. So this that was the letter in which we received. Not what we were hoping for. We we're hoping for a, a different result than that. So we're kind of at a crossroads here. Um, so I would like to hear your thoughts uh, and your opinions on this letter, uh, what you feel, thoughts, comments. So um, we'll just go in an orderly fashion, I guess, and we can. Uh, and if you want to go first, just because you happen to be in the upper left-hand corner of my screen. Okay. Well, I thought it was um, unfortunate, but really probably not unexpected. Um, I think we should uh, uh, um, get AI3 to update it and resubmit it. Okay. Um, Doug, your thoughts? Uh, I echo Nan's thoughts. Um, I, I would also um, be interested in resubmitting, but I'm, I'm wondering if there's a possibility of getting more information from the MSBA that um, around uh, the sort of profile of the applicants that they chose um, over Cohasset um, and um, I guess just a little bit more information there and and where their assessment of the school differed 
from the assessment of AI3 um, or whether it wasn't that it differed, but that the schools that also applied had more um, uh, pressing issues to deal with. I guess sort of understanding that that would be would be helpful to me. Um, and I think maybe to all of us in terms of before submitting a um, resubmitting an application. Uh, Craig. Sure. Um, <clears throat> turn the lights on here. I look like a confidential informant. Um, <laughs> I um, I have a different perspective uh, on things. I um, I I'm I'm very disappointed, and um, I think that we have an existing conditions study that uh, demonstrates the immediate need for a new middle high school. And um, I have a, I don't have a high degree of confidence as to when we would be invited into the program. I don't want to wait around for two, three, four more cycles before they decide Cohasset is going to be invited. And then we start a six year process on top of that. That would, add, that, would, that would basically add another decade for our kids in the current facility. And that is unacceptable to me. So um, I think it was a valiant effort. I don't necessarily know that it's the end of that, but I think it should be the beginning of some exploration efforts relative to thrusting forth on our own in Cohasset. And um, I think that we can look at things like, okay, well, what would put us on a financially similar plane um, if we were to do that, um, you know, uh, comparatively when you're, when you're thinking about, you know, had we been invited to the MSBA program? Well, the reimbursement rate for MSBA um, is based on a whole calculus um, it's obviously a, a need-based, uh, you know, calculation. Um, it's, 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 uh, as I mentioned, it, I think we've talked about this at other meetings, the percent of a percent, some of you already know this. Um, in talking to um, various professionals, design professionals, it, it, it's, it's safe to presume that Cohasset's ultimate reimbursement rate would be somewhere in the 20 to 25% um, area. And um, I've, um, I've, I've done some exploratory work to sort of put up a, to, to sort of develop a, a dummy budget and, and, and our budget would be about $200 million soup to nuts for our project, including athletic facilities. So everything from feasibility all the way through, everything's totally done, $200 million. So, um, you know, you look at about 20% of that figure and um, you're talking about $40 million. So, um, I think that it is worthwhile for us to form a finance subcommittee of this school facilities committee to try and explore whether there is an appetite amongst the community to, uh, in, in, you know, engage in a, in a, in a massive fundraising effort. I mean, th there's, there's naming options. I mean, people might be involved, interested in this seriously. And there's, and there's some, some out of the box ideas that you can come up with. One example of something that I've thought of is you know so two major ways to um to generate some interest in in naming rights and and, and fundraising community-wide are uh, one um incorporate facets of the new building that would be utilized by the entire community at large which we've discussed right um so that would be like you know um, large scale um you know uh, fitness uh, centers uh performing arts center um, things that the entire community could use um, and, and, and could also be be a potential source of revenue for the town as well uh, if, if outside groups wanted to utilize if we have a really nice performing arts center and some production or theater company wanted to put on a play then you know they could rent out our facility you know just an example of the of the, of the, of the many different possibilities the second way to i think generate some interest from a fundraising perspective um, and, and a sort of community-wide perspective is to incorporate um, teaching and learning facilities within the new uh, building that would expand upon our current 
um, capacities for programming. What I in a, in, a, in a specific example for that is special education. So um, the second largest ticket for the schools uh, from a budgetary perspective is um, is uh, special education out of district tuitions, second to payroll. Um, if if we developed a robust special education facility that uh, not only allowed us to retain our own students, which would be nice, um, and save that money, but would also be a source of uh, great revenue for the town if we were able to attract um, individuals from neighboring districts or nearby districts that whose whose district did not offer that, like Cohasset currently does not. Right. So now instead of paying out those tuitions, we'd be um, we'd be gaining revenue by by allowing out of district students in to take take um, advantage of those facilities. So those are just sort of two just general examples of sort of out of the box thoughts that, that we can use in order to sort of maybe garner a little bit more community wide interest in fundraising, because obviously raising, you know, $40 million or, or a number that approaches that would be, I think, a, a Herculean task. Yeah, Nan, your, your hands up. Go ahead. I mean, I'm, I'm just I, I've obviously, obviously done a lot. I just, of couple, about this. I just have a couple of questions. The first one is um, I'm not convinced we need a whole new building. Um, I'm not convinced that we can't renovate what we've got and then add a new building for um, arts or sports. Um, that's the first thing. So I think you'd have to convince me that you have to build a whole new building. Second uh, um, thing is I'm a past 40 year special ed teacher. Sped people, kids come in all forms and uh, um, different, different disabilities. And each one requires a massive amount of specifically trained personnel. Um, you know, whether you have a dyslexic child, an autistic child, a developmentally disabled child, a physically handicapped child, they're all different. And the amount of staffing required for that is massive. Um, so I'm wondering how could, that could possibly work. Um, at one time, I was the out of district coordinator for the town of Brookline years ago. Um, and I, uh, that was way long ago, but I spent a lot of time visiting all those programs back then. And um, then in my more current role, or most recent role as a um, reading disability specialist, I visited lots of those programs. And um, my husband has been in charge of building um the, the architect for building program for the autistic kids um it's just a massive problem and i i can't imagine how you would do that um that's all <laughs> both <laughs> both comments but back to the first one um which i think is more important um you have ju jumped to the conclusion that you need a whole new school um I can't see how at least part of the building um, is not able to, or you, why you can't renovate the current building. So those are my just two off the top of my head immediate comments. Mm. Okay, well, all I'm doing is, um, is especially expressing my perspective um, and um, I, I certainly understand that uh, you will not be the only one uh, who shares yours, Nan. And uh, I think I'd have to do a lot more than just convince you. <laughs> so um, I think I think um, that this would be something that the entire town would need to be on board with. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I do, though, um, disagree that I'm jumping to any conclusions. I've, I've been dealing with this for about two years now and, and talking to various design professionals, thinking about this. Um, initiating the formation of this committee. I mean, I, I, I'm not jumping to any conclusions. I've, I've been in that building a lot, um, you know, doing various walkthroughs uh, as, as a school committee member. I mean, I just, it's, I've not jumped to any conclusions. I've come to the conclusion that we, our middle high school is uh, currently, uh, it's, it's, it's limiting the programming that we're able to offer Cohasset students. Um, in, 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 in many ways. It's just, it's, it's when I, I think that, well, I mean, we, we saw the presentation, right? You, you compare it to the facilities that we see around us. It's just not on par. Now, mm -hmm. luckily, uh, you know, student achievement in Cohasset is still 
uh, fairly competitive um, because um, I think individuals, you know, have, uh, well, I think there's a whole host of reasons for that. Um, the school system is one, but it's, I think, one of many factors. And um, I, I, I just, yeah, I, I very strongly feel that we should explore moving forward privately. And I don't, I, I, I know that other people are going to share your, your, your views, your view, viewpoints, Nan. Um, and I, I, I accept that, but um, I, I, I don't accept uh, that we're going to not have another school here for 10 years. I, 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 that's not acceptable to me. It's, it's already old. It's already outdated. Uh, it's already suboptimal. And I don't want to wait a decade before the kids are, are in a new building. So no, I agree with all that. Mm. Yeah. So, and so, and I also don't want to throw good money after bad, right? So if we, if we, if we're waiting around, the, the, you know, for, to be invited to a program that who knows when it's coming, um, we're also throwing money in, you know, how many millions of dollars we thrown into the old building that we're going to eventually knock down where we could just contribute that to, you know, new design and, and construction costs. Now, I mean, I, I understand that it's not going to be, you know, anywhere in the neighborhood of $200 million, but there's going to be, you know, many millions of dollars during that 10 year period spent on the existing facility that we shouldn't be spending it on. So that's just another consideration. But again, what, this is a initial reaction to the yeah. MSBA's response. I don't like it. I don't accept it. I want the committee to explore other alternatives. That's my position. Okay, that's great. All right, thank you, Craig. Um, Doug, you had your hand up. Did you wanna comment on anything or? I, I do, but before I do that, I, I would yield to Paul because he okay. hasn't had the opportunity yep. to go. Yep. All right, Paul, go ahead. I can wait my turn. I'd like to hear what you have to say. All right, then uh, you can go, Doug. Oh, um, <clears throat> so I, I, think, I think Craig's brought up a few good points. Um, one of the things I think would be helpful to know um, and maybe Jen also was talking about this is, you know, they, they were, you know, they gave us some specifics in the letter um, that there were 54 applicants from 26 uh, towns, I believe it said. Um, I would be interested to understand from that, what, you know, how many towns did get accepted? What is our, you know, where did we fall in that run? Um, because again, to Craig's point, I, I think I, I personally believe, and I've heard this in my business, I, this is one of the things that I do in my line of work is we build MSBA schools. Um, and, and I've also known and heard and been and talked to different uh, entities who have said it's not uncommon to, to, to not make it the first run. Um, and so I, I, I think I, as I said earlier, I, I echo what Nan said, which was to apply again. Um, and I, I, but I also think we should do a little bit of research and understand where we stood in that whole um, in that whole scheme, because there is there is obviously a reason. Uh, you know, they they look at towns, you know, ability to pay and things of that nature. Um, you know, as they go through this process, so. Um, if it looks like, you know, we had a good program, we had a good package and we just didn't make it this year because of the, the numbers, then maybe, you know, we do make it next year. Um, so I, 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 would, I would say that, you know, we would, if, if we're able to, I would like to see us understand where we fell in this process to get a better handle on whether we think it's worth waiting and applying a second time, um, or maybe we take parallel paths and we apply a second time, but at the same time, we start looking at self-funding um, the project uh, to go forward. I, I, again, based on my experience in this business, I feel it's gonna be challenging. I, I would be right beside Craig in trying to convince others that this school needs to be replaced. I've been in a lot of projects where we've done full replacements. I've been in projects where we've done renovations. I've been in projects where we've done occupied renovations. And there's a whole host of issues that go along with all of those, all of those options. Um, and so I, I think that it's we we should, you know, really consider where we're where we're heading here. And when we when we talk about whether we want to, you know, as as Craig said, throw good money after bad. 
um, it's, it's probably something we want to really consider heavily. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Hey, Paul, you want to? Yeah, uh, well, I think everybody has a really good point about what, what we're talking about. Craig, I 100% uh, agree with you. If we can um, um, see a special needs program, special education, of, of what, he, what he's talking about, the out of district, and that we could have more and more children stay inside Cohasset School District. I think it's what's best for the child to be able to stay in school with his brothers and sisters. And we're not being able to do that right now because of facilities. Um, I do not think that that's gonna hold us to what we already have by basically renovating what we already have. Um, I think I think that might be the way to go uh, is renovation. Uh, and also, too, is I think that we've kind of looked way like way too forward and not close enough to what we already have going on now. And that is we, we still have Osgood and we still have Deer Hill that we have to that we have to take care of or we have to discuss of what the future is for those two schools. They're going to need roofs. They're going to need all these other things. Craig and I sit on a uh, nutrition's committee together, and we've found ways to maybe build a kitchen in Deer Hill, which would make better food for the schools. So I don't think necessarily just saying, hey, we're going to spend $200 million in 10 years or five years or whatever it is. That's great. But what are we doing today, tomorrow, the next day? What's the timetable? And I think as a committee, we need to be responsible to say, okay, for the next 10 years, with or without help from the state, this is what we're going to do because we're seeing, um, you know, we, we all know what we need in these schools, but we're not even taking that to the town. Um, we're, uh, you know, and I, I would invite anybody to um, the next school committee meeting or the one that we just had to, to go back and watch it because, you know, it's a presentation of exactly what we need now. Um, and those are a lot of uh, things that weren't addressed and I don't think they're ever going to be addressed unless this committee um, kind of outlines it and lets everybody know that this is the long-term 10-year program. This is what we're going to do in the next 10 years with or without state help and if the state helps comes in and then to, to, to what you were saying earlier Craig about like getting people um, invested right what is it what's in it for somebody who has kids in elementary schools or my kids are in high school or um, people that live in the town, they, they get to see shows and better athletics. And, you know, there's a whole host of things um, that we can offer, but what are we offering and what, what are we gonna do in the next five to 10 years? So I'd like to see us come up with a one-year plan, a two-year plan, a three-year plan, a four-year plan, five-year plan, and a five to 10-year plan. But I think we should at least know what we're going to do in the next couple of years to these buildings, because every time that, you know, the longer we take, the longer the price goes up and we're really not, you know, being service to our kids if we're not going to keep them with, you know, safe and, 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 and good schools. And I say that for facilities because our school systems, I, I got to say is we're, we're, it's top notch, our administrators and principals are top notch. So the, the human resources are there, it's just the facilities need to uh, be updated. Okay. Um, I was disappointed, but not shocked that we weren't accepted. Because as Doug stated, um, it's very hard to get in there on the, on the first, first go. Um, my gut tells me is, is my personal opinion is we, we, we do need a new middle high school, um, not just from a construction standpoint, but from a student learning standpoint, um, as it compared to a lot of the, um, our teachers are, are, are superheroes as far as I'm concerned in those two schools with what limitations they have to deal with and our education is still, is still great. Just think what we could do if we actually gave them the proper tools, um, how, how our kids could thrive. So. Um, that's my opinion. Um, I also think that we should do a two-prong approach. Um, the window is opening up in, in three days, so it's not like we have a lot of legwork to do uh, on reapplying. Um, 
I mean, all the information is already there. I don't know if it's as simple as, you know, changing some dates. I knew, I know when they were here and the letter just addresses the high school, we're going to put, we should put both in, do the middle and the high school submission again. Um, and while that's happening, I think we need to, we need to fill out the community. We need to see what the appetite is because I, I've, I've, I've seen, you know, I've seen $200 million is a lot. And we're going to have to have our hands full with convincing people um, to, to, to go that route. Um, so I think we, I think we need to do, in my opinion, we need to do both of those things. Um, and to Paul, to, to your second point about what are we doing with the, the, the current schools, um, we, 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 I'm going to put that on the agenda for our meeting on the 31st uh, to talk more in depth with that. Um, uh, I just want to focus on the MSBA result right now. Um, but uh, I do think, um, as we discussed, I don't know if it was that last meeting, you know, we, we, we did have these numbers for all those schools to do something, and it just seems to have gone nowhere. Um, so I, I think we need to, to start getting the driver's seat and, and start driving some of the things home with some other committees that where we need to talk to about funding or whatever, or facilities department itself, how much they spend every year on those buildings. We can, we can talk all about that on the 31st. Um, but as far as the MSBA stuff goes, I, I think we should resubmit and we should go down the road of going alone. And if those two meet up, wonderful. Um, if they don't, then we'll, we'll see where the chips lie, I guess. So. Should AI3 up, update what they've written in any way to make it more juicy? <laughs> <laughs> juicy. <laughs> um, yeah, I could, I could reach out to them. Um, I don't know if, if uh, I mean, the information's all there. I don't know, other than certain things deteriorate, deteriorating more than what's in there over the past, you know, year or so when that, coming up to a year, I believe, when that survey was done. Um, I don't know what else we could say that could really convince them. I mean, they, they've walked through. I mean, they, they, they have all the videos. They, they have everything. So um, I don't know, I to say, I don't know what more we can do. Um, I will reach out to um, Mr. Creighton uh, and see if um, he'll let me or if he wants to have a call with me to to call them and, and try to get specifics on, on why we weren't invited to get a little more background to it. Um, and, and we can see where we go from there. Uh, Craig, you got your hand up? Yes. Um I think the committee should consider if we're going to take parallel paths, which I don't disagree with, um, we should consider whether or not we want to ask for the money for a feasibility study so that we can keep moving in that direction. So we're not wasting time. Um, that was sort of AI3's, um, you know, not necessarily recommendation, but something they noted that it's a way to save time. So another consideration, by the way, just to keep in mind is um, if we if we did move privately, we're not obviously having to adhere to the MSBA's timeline, so it cuts down um, almost a year off the project timing, um, which you know I, that may be neither here nor there for some people. Um, you know, for me, it's certainly material, but um, uh, it's just something to note. So you know, the feasibility study is about two million dollars, my understanding, and uh, we would want to ask for that. Um, I, I believe. Uh, at town meeting, um, if, if we were thinking of, of, of sort of trying to have this parallel path where we were exploring doing it on our own and then obviously uh, doing it, you know, uh, submitting another SOI at the same time, but um, something to consider. I, I'd like the committee to consider it anyway. Craig, can you help me out with just what exactly would the feasibility study provide us with? Is it the actual technical? A technological part of like where does a building go and where is it facing and how does traffic work or is it also including because I think there's a human component to this of what does this community want and need and at what price is tolerable to them or at what cost um, 
to the community? Is it tolerable? Because I think that that, that those two pieces kind of come together at, at some point. I think, Jason, I loved your word, appetites. They're, understanding what the appetite is um, in the broader community of not just parents of school-aged children, I think would be really interesting to have a, a better understanding of that because they people may have an appetite for it, but at what cost? Will they, would they take on a, a tax over, you know, an override or something like that or an increase in taxes over time um, for those things um, as well? And I just, I just, I need some education myself as to what that feasibility study encompasses. I think we all do, Jen, it's a fair point. Okay. But I, I think that Doug's probably uniquely suited to answer the question, but my understanding is all of the above okay. um, is, is something that would be included, but I think Doug probably can add some insight here. Awesome. Yeah, so a feasibility study would would actually be bringing on a design team and they would actually start looking at all the things you just said. So they would talk to the they would talk to the school, they would ask them, you know, what is it that you want to see out of this, both educationally and institutionally? Um, they would start looking at the, the opportunities of, of how they would go about this. Is it a renovation? Is it a, is it a new school or are there additions? Um, and then they would, you know, ultimately at the end of the feasibility study, they would present a, um, what they propose to do um, for us, um, i.e. they would prevent, present some, some um, you know, um, some renderings of, you know, this is what we think this, uh, you know, we think we want, you know, for example, if they said, we think, you know, you should build a new school and this is the area we think we should, you should build it on. Here's some feasibility, you know, based on what you folks have asked us and, and said what you want to see this, this building look like and this, this uh, institution be, here's some, here's some renderings. And there's not, there's not a lot of them, but there's probably 10, 12, 14 renderings of the different parts of the, of the facility and to show what that would look like. Uh, and then from that point, that's when you, you actually develop a basis of design of what you really want this project to look like. And then you start moving forward from that into doing some schematic documents and, and then creating the project. How so, long does a feasibility study take to develop in your experience? So the last one I did with, um, you know, I'm on, a, I'm doing a design build project right now with Harvard. And we, we did the feasibility from May to uh, uh, September on a project there, which is not nearly as complicated and as involved as, as another school. Um, but it was, it, it's probably about a year long project, I would assume, I would expect. And, it, and it's really beginning to, to, to bring in a, a design team that you more or less would, you know, start partnering with to be the designer of your project, because once you've gotten through that, gotten through that feasibility, the next thing we would do is be we'd be looking at them to provide budgeting for us to understand how much the actual the project would actually cost, uh, and then you know again that would be a high level estimate of what the project would cost. And then from that, we make some decisions as a town and, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want to do this whole thing? We want to, you know, and I'll go move forward or do we want to make some adjustments and, 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 and then have them start moving into an actual design of the project from that point. So, so it, it asked, probably a year. So it asked for $2 million at Springtown meeting. And so people would start the 1st of July working on a feasibility study that potentially would be done by the following town meeting, spring town meeting. That's probably about right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, glad we brought Doug along. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, so is that, uh... That a, a route we want to uh, we want to take. We want to do a subcommittee and then get all the financials together and see if it really is the two million. I mean, I reach out to AI three and get a full proposal. Is that, uh, is that what everyone's thinking? Well, you know, I guess the thing with that is 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 are we going to get married to AI three on this? Um, or not, and it, it's definitely just you know something for us to to, to decide and think about. Um, but what we would 
at this point, we may want to have a conversation a little further in that if we are going down this path, do we, do we want to engage an, uh, an owner's project manager? I think, I think we probably do, Doug, but I, I, I also think, I think we, Doug, correct me if I'm wrong, we'd have to, if we sought the funds and the town um, approved the allocation of funds for the feasibility study, we'd have to send that out to bid regardless of the fact that AI3 has helped us with the existing condition. So exactly. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so, um, but um, I, I think an OPM is probably, uh, I, I don't know. When, when do we do you usually retain that uh, ahead of the feasibility, Doug, or do you, or do you do that while that's going on or? or? It, it, it would, I, I would, I would, you know, the, the thing with the owner's project manager is, is that, you know, none of us, all of us do other things in our lives. And this isn't the only thing that we do. Um, when it gets into being in a, in a feasibility study, there is a lot of, there is a lot of communication. There are a lot of meetings. There are a lot of, you know, um, things like that that happen. There's going to be meetings that the, the these folks will come to school committee meetings and, and there's going to be someone that's going to organize that and shepherd that process. And that more often than not is, a, is an owner's project manager for us. So we need one now. There's, there's, yeah, a guess lot involved, there's a lot involved with doing a feasibility study. Okay. So we so we need two things from town meeting then. We would need for the OPM and the OPM and the feasibility study. Feasibility. I guess it makes sense to ask for them simultaneously, right, Doug? Because we want to want to get one if we're going we went to the OPM if we don't get the funds for the feasibility, right? We, we... Uh, yeah, and I, I would agree with that. And you know, unless of course, and I'm not I'm not familiar enough with the town's structure to understand, but unless there is someone in our town that can act as act in that role um, uh, as, as, a, as an OPM. So I, I had just general conversations with AI3 about this as we were talking about the whole project early on and um, they indicate they were talking about third party OPMs. So it wasn't, they, they, they never indicated there would be someone that was coming from the town. They, they, and that, that doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't Doug. I just, I always got the sense it would be a third party. And typically it is. Uh, I just, you know, I just didn't know if there's, you know, there are some, some, you know, institutions that say, you know, we have people on, on the payroll that this is something that they could manage to. Um, more often than not, I don't, I think that towns, you know, and even universities and, and so forth end up hiring out for that service. Yeah, I would imagine that's where we're at in class. I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty short on resources as it is. I doubt that we'd have someone that would have uh, the bandwidth to take that, take on something like that. Um, but, I, but that's just my thought, given my, my dealings with town government through the school committee and such, but in this. How much, Doug, how much do they usually, do you have an idea of what, what, what approximate, I've never asked anyone, what would what, what an OPM cost? Like, what do they? I, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm usually on the other side of that fence, um, okay. but I can, I, I know plenty out there that I can, I can call and ask. Huh. And share that information with you. Okay. Okay. Um. It looks like we have a have a direction. Um, do we know when we have to put in the request by? Does anybody remember what the date is for the annual town meeting item? Yeah. Um, no, but I or I mean, I'm, I'm happy to volunteer to to sort of do this. Maybe you know, with someone else, we're going to have to. Yeah, like you know, put a warrant item petition together. together. Yeah. Yeah, so I, could, I know what they sent an email and I just don't remember off the top. Yeah, oh, I could probably look it up. Uh, uh, we just talked about it. I think I, I, I want to say February or March. Okay. I'll get the exact date in one of my emails because um, we know that because of the, I'm on that school facilities committee and um, I can get that for the next meeting. Okay. And that, the 31st uh, i'll bring that and um <clears throat> and also i'll bring the update of what we're currently asking for but uh, um the, the i think there's craig what's the 15 16 items in the capital 16 i think 
Yeah. So I'll share, I could be 15. Yeah, I'll share that with you, Jason, for the next meeting, okay? Okay. Yep. Sounds good. And so, Craig, if you want me to help you, I, I'd be glad to help with, with the so team. So I got my marching orders clear. I mean, we, we you want me to go and figure out, I, I was going to go and inquire exactly what is needed for uh, us as a town committee to uh, to seek that someone is, is something is placed on the warrant uh, as for consideration of town meeting and also the deadline by which we need to do that? Yes, that'd be good. Okay. And is this something that everyone feels is, is a good move? Yes. All right. So I'll do that and I'll report back at our next meeting. Awesome. Unless the deadline is before the next meeting, in which case. Then we'll have to scramble. After the next meeting. <laughs> yeah. I don't if, think you, if you need any help with that, just, just, yeah. you know, I can, I can jump in and, and, and help. Yeah. With that. We do have, we do an article have on, we're going to have to parade this in front of some other um, boards and committees. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll let you know, Jason and uh, Craig, uh, because we do have a facilities committee meeting next Tuesday or Thursday. So uh, when I get the exact date, if I find out that it's any earlier, then I'll contact you guys like immediately. But I'll get that information over pretty quickly. Oh, um, deadline is January 20th. Thank you, you in attendance. That's probably why we're meeting on the 17th. <laughs> Wait, is that the date? Uh, for um, capital projects or just for town budgets? I don't know. Because really if the, a lot of times you can put in a warrant article right until a month before when they start getting to print it. And um, I think that's the, might be the deadline for um, town departments to get their budgets in so that then, uh, Chris Senior can put together the total budget. Um, okay. But it might not necessarily be the deadline for a capital projects. Okay. Sure. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I guess what I'll do is um, uh, I will just get that information to you, Jason. I mean, so Mr. Cameron gave us that January 20th item, but there's some confusion as to what the, the, the issue that Nan just raised. So why don't I just get an answer to that question in the short term, like as in tomorrow, and I can get that to you, Mr. Earls. Okay. And um, I, 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 I believe that Nan is, is correct in that you'd have a little bit more um, time for something like this, like the two things that we're talking about. Right. Um, but I am not certain. So I will ascertain that and let you all okay. through the chairperson. Sounds good. Um, other than that, the only other item is to approve the minutes from our December 20th meeting. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I'm just going to say all those in favor. Aye. 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 There we go. Aye. All right. Minutes have passed. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about, bring up before we adjourn? Nope. Okay, then I will take a motion to adjourn. Second. Or mo mo so moved. I don't know if you made one or you just said I'll take one. Did you say take one? I'll or take one? one. Yes. Uh, so moved. <laughs> okay. We'll have a second. second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Bye. All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, everyone. Thank you.